If you've watched my video on the Logitech G502 SE Hero, you probably already know I'm a huge fan when it comes to the G502 lineup. I've been using it for years and quite frankly, it's my go-to recommendation for just about anything. Today, we are gonna take a look at the latest revision in the lineup, the G502 Lightspeed. Are the minor modifications and the removal of a wire Worth the hefty price tag? Let's find out. What's going on guys? I'm Brian and today we're going to take a look at the G502 Lightspeed from Logitech. Before we get started, check out the description box below for any related links we may be talking about today in this video. Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing for more tech content just like this and feel free to like this video if you end up enjoying it. All right, so the G502 Lightspeed retails for $150 and as of shooting this video right now, um, you can actually pick it up for $130 on, at places such as Amazon and Best Buy. I'm not quite sure if this is going to be like the new price for the mouse, but you can get it um, for that price right now and it seems like it does drop down to this price every so often. In the box, you're gonna find a mouse hopefully, a little weight slash USB dongle carrier, some documentation, as well as a nice braided cable. Now, if you're familiar with the design of the previous versions of the G502, you're basically familiar with the design of the G502 Lightspeed. It has the same ergonomic feel as the others, and if you like those mouses, you will also enjoy this mouse as well. Now, there are a few differences from those versions of the mouse to this one. So first off, this mouse is wireless and I don't know if you could tell, it's definitely wireless. And that's kind of like why you're looking at it in the first place, right? It's a fan favorite mouse that has like basically finally spread its wings and it's ready to go out and compete in the, the mystic, you know, really highly competitive wireless mouse arena, right? Yeah. I mean, this is like what we've all been waiting for, right? Um, anyway, I will be going over the performance um, in a minute. But I can tell you right now that this thing is like an engineering gem. Not only is it wireless, but it's also a lot lighter than its previous iterations. Um, again, we'll touch base on the performance as well as the weight, like how much it actually weighs in a moment. Um, but before we get into that, I wanna go over the rest of the differences. The second difference that I spotted is going to be the actual wheel um, itself. And the wheel is identical to that of the one that you'll find on like the G5 or the G900. Um, the wheel works just as well as the older G502's wheels. It's just, basically it's hollow. And I imagine that Logitech switched the design for this wheel just to kind of help decrease the weight of the mouse, especially since they had to add, you know, a battery into this mouse. The last difference I spotted was the base of the mouse. And instead of having um, just one, you know, housing in here for the weights, there's actually two housings on the on the, the base of this mouse. The, first, the top one's gonna be for your weights, and then the bottom one's gonna be for your um, power play adapter if you have the power play map. There's also a really cool and really nifty and a really nice place you can put your USB um, your USB dongle in here if you want to take this to you know on the go. I really like that. Um, I didn't. I don't like mouses like the G900 doesn't have that. Really, you know, kind of drives me nuts when you don't have when you have a wireless mouse that doesn't have a spot to put its actual wireless dongle with the mouse. It makes it a lot easier to carry this thing around. All right, so now that the major differences are out of the way, let's run through the rest of what makes up the G502 Lightspeed. The Lightspeed is gonna weigh in at just 114 grams without any of the additional 16 grams worth of weights that they actually put in this little this little kit that they give you. So 16 extra grams, so it's 114 without them. Um, this is actually 13 grams lighter than the G502 SE Hero, which weighs in on my scale that I have at 127 grams. As for the dimensions, the Lightspeed has the identical dimensions as the previous iterations coming at 132 millimeters long, 75 millimeters wide, and then 40 millimeters tall. The mouse's dimensions and weight make it a great option for most people regardless of how big your hands are, how big or small your hands are for that matter. Now the build quality of this mouse is just as good as the previous iterations. It's like really nice. The majority of it's made of high quality plastics that just make it feel really good when you're trying to use it. Um, and it's really comfortable as well. I have tested it for hours and hours and hours without any comfort issues whatsoever. The mouse wheel has this nice like rubber grooved padding on it. 
um, but the actual wheel itself, like underneath the padding, is made of metal, so that's nice. Um, and as I mentioned before, the wheel isn't solid like the previous G502s, but it does work just as well. The, the free scrolling is great too on it. It doesn't go as long, but it's still great. Also, unlike the G502 SE Hero that I did a review on a couple months ago, the wheel doesn't wobble. So like that one I had, that that, that version, actually this one I think I got, this one doesn't, does it do it? Yeah, it does a little bit. You get like a wobble, it's shaky, you know? This one doesn't have that shake that this mouse has. Um, so it was either, I was thinking, so I was thinking that either the G502 SE Hero that I have, it has a defective mouse wheel or it was fixed in this iteration. Not quite sure which one it is, but one of those two things happened. The last thing I want to mention about, um, the build quality and the design of the actual mouse is going to be on the charging port. Um, and I hollered about this during my Razer Mambo wireless review, and I'm going to holler about it again right now. Now, the entryway on the on the mouse is made for a specific size, the micro USB cable. And that is great for when you have the cable actually plugged in because it looks nice and seamless. But if you're if you're a company and you're gonna do this, please make the opening larger than what like a typical size would, you know, a typical cable would fit in. I like to charge my wireless mice with a cable such as this one right here. It's a retractable cable. You plug it in, it's nice and easy. It keeps your setup um, somewhat clean, makes it easier for you. But um, with this mouse, the cable doesn't fit into the port. Like the port, the, the, this part of the, the cable is way too thick for this port. And so whenever I need to actually want to charge my, my uh, mouse, I have to grab the, the charging cable. I have to plug it in and plug it in here. And it's just a pain in the butt. I mean, come on, Logitech, just make it like a little bit bigger or just don't make a proprietary port size. Moving on from the build quality, like its siblings, this guy is pack full of features. First off, it's going to use the Logitech Hero sensor, which is the same sensor that's gonna be used on the G502 Hero and the SE Hero. We will talk about performance in a minute, but this basically means you can more or less expect like the same performance out of this mouse as you have on the G502 Hero or the G502 um, SE Hero, which is the same mouse, but different colors, right? Now, the sensor allows for the same maximum DPI of 16,000. And as I've said before, most people will never utilize like that maximum DPI. And quite frankly, it's more so a selling tactic nowadays anyway. All right, so the mouse also has um, those 11 programmable buttons. They sound and feel identical to those that are on the SE Hero. Here's a quick sound test for any of you guys who are curious about that. Now to recap, you have your standard left, right, and middle click buttons. Then you're gonna have your scroll, wheel, left, and right click buttons. You then have um, two buttons that are attached to your left click button. And then you have three buttons that are, that are going to surround your thumb, where you know, where your thumb actually lies. By default, the buttons attached to your to the left click button are gonna be used for um, put, you know, kind of raising or lowering your DPI. And then the button that's going to be attached, that's gonna be the very tip of your thumb is what's considered the DPI shift button. This changes the DPI to whatever you have it set in the software. Now, along with those two buttons, you have two buttons in the middle of your mouse. The upper one locks and unlocks your mouse for hyper scrolling. And then the lower one by default is gonna be used to change mouse profiles. Okay, so now we are on to why you're here in the first place. Does this wireless mouse actually perform as good as the wired versions? And to say it directly, yes, yes it does, but hold on, don't just leave. I know that's all you guys want, but hold on, there's more to be said about the performance of this device before you can go out and make your decision. So the big question when it comes to wireless mice is how is the wireless connection? Is there delays or anything like that? And I can gladly say no. For this, with this mouse, this, the connection is absolutely rock solid, and I did not notice any delays or missteps during the past few weeks that I've been testing it. It was just awesome. What's more so awesome is that this thing feels so darn light. And as I said before, it is 13 grams lighter than the SE Hero counterpart, but I'm telling you right now, it's just insane how light this actually feels. Like, what this actually feels like. It's so light and how great it actually feels when you're playing games with it. I truly didn't think Logitech could improve the G502 any more than they already had when they released the SE Hero, but somehow, 
here we are. And they did. <laughs> The last thing I want to mention about performance is going to be about the battery life. And I can tell you right now, when I did the testing that I did on the Razer Mamba Wireless, I was super impressed with that mouse's battery life. It was really great. Um, like incredibly impressed with how long that one lasted. Well, this guy right here is just as impressive when it comes to the battery life, if not maybe a little bit more impressive. Let me clarify that I'm on my computer using a mouse for hours every single day. And this thing lasted for over a week with RGB on 100% brightness and the polling rate at 8,000 MS. I actually completely forgot about the battery life testing that I was doing until I, it alerted me that it was low on battery life. Like that's how long it lasted and how impressed I was with it. Um, it was super impressive and you should have no issues with the battery life at all. You probably will get like a week or two out of the charge if you don't use your computer like me. And it's great unless of course you like to use a retractable freaking USB cable and then you can't do that because obviously Logitech doesn't like me or something. What the heck Logitech? <laughs> All right, onto the software before I start freaking out about this stupid charger, right? Um, okay, so if you watched my SE Hero video, I'm basically going to say the same things I said in that video. The software is great and it's nice and clean. You can program all the buttons on your mouse to do various things such as launch applications or set them up as macros. Within the software, you also have control of that, those DPI settings as well as your RGB settings too. Now with all of that said, should you buy the G502 Lightspeed? Is it really worth the 200 plus percent premium you'll pay over the cost of a standard G502 Hero or 502 SE Hero? And I would love to say that this guy is worth the $130 they're asking right now or $150 retail they're asking for. But the reality of it is that's a lot of money for gaining just a wireless version of the G502. I mean, if you have a bunch of extra money and absolutely want a pure wireless setup, sure. It's it's a it's a, you know it's a great option. The mouse is awesome, and you know I guess it's worth it. But come on, I can tell you right now when the G nine hundred came out, I was super hyped in getting it. I was so excited for this thing, and after having it for a few months, I can t definitely tell you the appeal faded as well. I like having a wireless version of my favorite mouse, but I just really can't justify recommending this mouse to you guys until I see the price drop down to like 65 to $80 range. I just don't think it's worth more than that because you're not getting like a ton of extra features. All you're getting is like, again, a good battery and a wireless device, right? If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, you know what to do and let me know why in the comments below. Also check out my latest video. It'll be popping up right here. And don't forget to subscribe for more tech content with your new favorite tech guy, which is obviously me. Oh, 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 I'm also going to be getting a mouse that looks a lot like this one. And I'll be testing that out in the near future as well. So keep an eye out for that review as well. And then I might be coming out with a comparison video, maybe, maybe, just maybe a hint to the future. I don't know. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching. See ya.